Dr. Malika Marshall has been helping us to navigate the coronavirus, including symptoms that you need to look out for, how to protect your family, and how to safely social distance. Dr. Malika joins us now live to answer some of your questions, and let's get right to it, Malika. Nancy in Brockton writes, can you tell us how many cases there are of this mystery illness that is affecting children here in Massachusetts? Malika? So there's been a relatively small number of kids who have gone on to develop what's being called a pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome, often four to six weeks after they were infected with the coronavirus. It's thought to be sort of an overreaction of the immune system to the virus, and these kids can get pretty sick with persistent fever and rash and fatigue. Sometimes kids end up in the ICU. There have been some suspected cases here in Massachusetts. For example, there are six possible cases at Boston Children's Hospital, two of those children remain hospitalized. None of them needed to be in the ICU. The good news is it's still incredibly rare and it can be treated. All right. Doctor, thank you. Diane asks, does having an autoimmune disease make you more susceptible to COVID-19? So having an autoimmune disease doesn't necessarily make you more susceptible to contracting the virus, but often the conditions themselves and the medications that are often used to suppress the immune system can make people at greater risk of developing COVID-related complications, severe complications. All right, Steph has a quick little question. She writes on Facebook, if you had it, can you get it again? You know, we just don't know. We know that a lot of people actually mount an immune response and they develop antibodies to the virus, but we don't know how long that immunity lasts, but obviously this is something that scientists are actively trying to investigate. You know, obviously a huge answer there once we get it. Uh, Mary in Auburn writes, seeing as how COVID-19 is caused by a virus, do antibacterial wipes actually kill the virus? Great question. So antibacterial wipes usually contain an antiseptic that is really good at killing bacteria, but probably not as good at killing viruses like the coronavirus as disinfectant wipes that often contain things like alcohol and bleach. Now, I know it's virtually impossible to get a hold of uh, disinfectant wipes right now, but those would be the best choice. All right. I was asking how we're doing on time because I wanted to ask you the hand sanitizer. I use so much of it. Is that helping? The hand sanitizer does help. It needs to have, a, you know, at least 70% alcohol content. But yes, hand washing and sanitizing. All right, and I got my question in regardless of time. Dr. Malika, thank you so much. If you have a question for Dr. Malika, there are three ways to reach her. Her email is drmalika at cbs.com. On Twitter, her handle is at Malika Marshall. On Facebook, you can message her, Dr. Malika Marshall.